who has time to read all that? It's the ozone part of 5.3. So ozone is O3, and it's the only molecule that has its name in the formula like that. It's quite clever, isn't it? Okay, ground level ozone, where we are in the troposphere, well, that's bad. That's an oxidant. It's going to oxidize your lungs, your eyes. It's a general irritant. Now, where would you encounter this? Well, strange enough, one source is photocopiers. Photocopiers, that distinctive kind of burning smell of photocopiers, is ozone coming out of it. This only leaves me with the trouble of how to draw a picture of his bottom once he's photocopying it. Another source of tropospheric or ground level ozone are the emissions from cars. Now car emissions aren't actually ozone, but when they interact with the energy from the sun, ozone is produced. None of this ozone's good. So why do we hear all this stuff about the ozone layer? Ah, well, the ozone layer, that's in the stratosphere. Ozone there is a good thing. Now, in the absence of an ozone layer, the sun's ultraviolet radiation can cause skin cancer, can cause cataracts, break the bonds in DNA, causing unwanted mutations, perhaps cancer. And these ultraviolet rays can also interfere with photosynthesis. Phytoplankton also are damaged by ultraviolet radiation. Obviously, the closer to the surface of the ocean, the more damage they'll sustain. But having an ozone layer offers us protection from this harmful ultraviolet radiation. Now, a little ultraviolet radiation does get through, but we are protected, as are the phytoplankton, the plants, and anything with DNA. So let's look at the natural creation and natural destruction of ozone in the ozone layer. Well, this is a tale of two energies. The higher energy light that comes from the sun has enough energy to break the oxygen-oxygen double bond into two oxygen radicals. The oxygen radical then reacts with another O2 to make O3, and that's our ozone. That requires high energy light from the sun. And this is good. We want ozone to be produced in the ozone layer. So here's the paradox. Why is the bond easier to break in ozone? It requires less energy to break the ozone-oxygen-oxygen double bond. That makes no sense. How can that take less energy? It's the same bond, an oxygen-oxygen double bond. Well, you know what? It isn't an oxygen-oxygen double bond. It's actually a resonance structure. Oxygen has two resonance structures. And so on average, that double bond and that single bond actually average out to a one and a half bond. So those bonds are neither single or double, they're one and a halves due to resonance. And also, destruction of ozone is good. The ozone is being destroyed by the ultraviolet light, this lower energy ultraviolet light. The light breaks the bond, and that's good, because otherwise the light was going to come down to me and break the bonds in my DNA. Instead, it broke the bonds in ozone. Ooh, I put my never nudes on. If you watch Arrested Development, you know what I mean. So why are CFC so bad? Well, they also break the ozone up, and that allows the ultraviolet radiation to come straight on through with all the trouble that that causes. The IB also wants you to know that the polar regions have holes in the ozone layer, but since no one owns the poles, then people have to cooperate internationally to solve problems like this.